Hi there folks, my name is Wing 24 from msflights.net and I'm here today with a quick tutorial setup video for how to set up your MSF K-Cars for to fly for our virtual airline. So, a couple of things you're going to need today. Today, First of all, you're going to have to have registered over at the MS Flights Virtual Airline website, uh, which you can access through msflights.net forward slash pilots. Uh, you can also access that directly from our homepage. Just go to msflights.net and then click on the Virtual Airline tab. Once you've created there, you'll be able to register your interest into joining our virtual airline. And once you've approved, you'll be able to log in and you'll need a few details off this screen. So you go to your pilot center. There are a couple of things before we start. You'll need to have your pilot ID, which you can find on the top right there. So in this case, mine is uh, displayed up there, MSF0285. So you're going to need to know that. You're also going to need to know the email, the password that you use to log in to your virtual airline account. Alright, so what we're going to need to do is you need to go back to the home page, you're going to need to go into our forum and you're going to need to go to the MS, so let's go here, go to the forum, you're going to go to the MS, MSF Airways section, and then right at the top here is one of the sticky ones, is how to fly for the virtual airline. Now this here gives a text guide, pretty much uh, exactly what we're going to be going through in the video today, but I thought I'd just do a step-by-step -step, uh, one with uh, that you can follow if you do need some any more assistance with it. So what we're going to need to do is, first of all, you're going to need to download and install, if you haven't already, uh, the FSUIPC uh, service from Pete Dawson. So the link's available here, I'll pop it in the description down below as well. Now this is a cool little piece of uh, free or payware, uh, it's up to you. The features that we need are just available for free, you don't need to register or uh, get the payware version for the feature that we use uh, so uh, you can go through and install that one as well um, there's no additional benefits for flying the VA if you do have the payware version so yeah as I said the freeware version is fine for you to use the next piece of software that you're going to need to download of course is you're going to need to download the msflights.net pilots kcars software so once you've done uh, you'll need to click on that link there and download that to your uh, downloads folder so we're going to have done that jump over here bring this one up here here we go so there we are, so you've uh, downloaded this one now, download a zip file. So first of all, you want to extract that one here. So extract that to its own folder. Jump into there, very, very quick and simple. So we want to run this uh, exe that's here. Double click on that one. Now if you are running Windows 8 and high, you may get this screen pop up. Just go more info and just go run anyway. So it goes through a setup wizard, so I'll go through that, so I'll go through the next one. And of course, next one is going to be where to install it to. Yeah, you can choose wherever you'd like to install it. Myself, personally, I have a directory for all my little uh, add-ons and utilities that I use. I've got utilities here, and I'm going to use the MSF Airways folder there. So we've got our installation path, all good. And we're going to go next. It's a very small piece of software, so very quickly, very quick and easy for you to install. Alrighty, so we can close that one now. We're done with that. Now, as I said, the information you're going to need for the next step is going to be you're going to need to, as I said, grab the pilot ID information from your MSF Airways account. So, again, grab that there, and of course, make sure you've got the password that you had from when you registered. Alright, now once you've completed the install, you would have got an icon would appear on your desktop, the MSF Airways icon. So, first of all, we're going to double click on that one today. Alright, so this will get you the initial login screen here. So as you can see, this is why I got you guys to note the pilot ID before. So we'll just uh, just in case you missed it, we'll bring it back. So we've got our pilot ID here. Now just to make sure you get no errors, it's just, it's just simple to copy that one there. And we're going to go up to here, pilot ID section. So we're going to paste that one there. Now we're going to enter in our password. I'm going to remember my password, of course. All right, then we're going to go to login. So once you've got the green tick there, bang, you're all done, you're online, and you're connected to our virtual airline servers. It will give you the pilot information there as well, so to show you some of the flights you've done, hours, and all your earnings and stuff like that, all the cool little information. So the next step, of course, is we're going to need to uh, fire up our FSX, and we can then start connecting, and we go through the next steps. So before we jump into FSX, or even after you've already jumped into FSX, we need to choose which flight we want to do. So today we're going to do a quick test flight. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at uh, one of the routes down in Australia. So we're going to be having a look at, uh, I think this one looks good today. So we'll do MSF 2314. So we're going from YMER to YCOM. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy that number there. I'll copy that one. Now we're going to jump back over into 
uh, MSF Airways software. So you can see up here is that we've got entry here, so the white boxes you can type into. So first of all, we're going to paste that one into there, and then we're going to go get flight info. So this will now check that flight number against the database there. So it'll say that you're departing from yep YMER, and you're going through to YCOM. Now, by default, it will say this here, if your aircraft information, it'll say 12 passengers. So, obviously, that's probably not what we're going to be flying. Now, today, I'm going to be flying in the Coronado Beach 200. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the list here. I'm going to see if uh, I can see if that aircraft's been loaded into our fleet map. And let's have a look here. Yep, there it is. Car King Air Boeing uh, B200. There it is. Fantastic. So, select that one there. Now, you can fly whatever you like. That's one of the great things about the MSF uh, Virtual Airline is the fact that you know you can fly whatever you want. If you want to fly a Chinook helicopter, you can fly a Chinook helicopter. If you want to fly a Concorde, you can fly a Concorde. It doesn't matter. Uh, one thing that we do ask though is that you just look for something, an aircraft that's similar on your list and also that you do not operate anything that's considered to be a strike fighter or bomber or anything like that. You know, civilian aircraft are fine uh, and military transports, uh, transport helicopters, transport aircraft are fine, no problem. Uh, but yeah, we request that you do not operate uh, any kind of strike fighters or anything silly like that. All right, so but in this case today, uh, we've got this one here. We've got the Beach 200. Now, if, for example, this hadn't been here, then we sort of work out how many passengers does a Beach 200 normally carry. Well, it normally carries around about sort of, you know, eight to ten people. So you choose one of the sort of, you know, generic options up there for that one. But fortunately today, we've got the Beach 200 is there, so we're going to select that one. And here's the important part you need to you need to tick the green tick, otherwise it won't actually re-update your aircraft to show that you go using the 200. So there we go, we've got it, we know that it's uh, max takeoff is that, we've got eight passengers on board today, and we're going to be cruising at about that speed. Good to know. Alright, so we've confirmed all that. Fantastic. Alright. Next step is we're going to need to connect, so we're going to we've, uh, f fire up our flight simulator. Now I've fired it up in the background here. Let me just close this to show. Yep. So you can see that I've already loaded my aircraft in in the background there. So next step is we do a connect to flight simulator. So this uses the FSUIPC program that you've already installed to connect it to actually use and get all pull all the data and all that kind of fun stuff from here. All right. A couple of things that you're going to need to do. So in your aircraft, you want to make sure that your parking brake has been set. Uh, before you start your flight. If you try and start your flight and you don't have your parking brake set, you'll actually pop up with a warning saying that it's not set. But uh, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I've already set it. Let's find out. So we're parked here at YMER, ready to go. We're going to go start flight. There we go. So it's going, yep, so it's ready to depart to find a destination of 1COM. Simulator is paused because I've currently paused it. And parking brake is applied, so my passengers are boarding. All right, fantastic. Done. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the simulator, and we're going to unpause. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take off my uh, brakes. I'm going to taxi out. Let's uh, check our uh, check our weather. Oh, we got ah no winds. That's fine. Now we'll check our uh, map there. All right. So throttle off a little bit. The we'll turbo props taking their time to, to do that. All right, so as I said, we've got our um, our aircraft is uh, with our flight started in K cars in our MSF Airways version of K cars ready to go. So we're just going to taxi out the runway and then we're going to take off. Now, what uh, the K cars information and what FSU IPC does is it feeds back to K cars all the information, so all your flight data. So it includes your uh, if the aircraft stalls, if it's over speeding, uh, anything like that, you know, how long you're on autopilot for and stuff like that. So a couple of things about the software that we use. So it does have an autopilot check, uh, which means that if um, you know you do engage your autopilot uh, above 10,000 feet, uh, it will actually randomly throw a AFK check uh, at you. Um, so it will sort of uh, throw a pop-up. It'll give you an in-sim message uh, in a little green uh, icon. There's a little green window that pops up on the, along the top. Uh, it'll also give you a, an OK button that you have to press in uh, the virtual airline software. Uh, so part of the new rules of the mandated for virtual airline is that you cannot have more than 60 minutes of AFK time away from a flight. So just bear that in mind. Uh, otherwise, you may run the risk of losing your PIREP and it won't be accepted. And uh, some people sort of complain about that, and it's like, well, you know what? It's it's uh, yeah, a pilot's always at the controls, even if the autopilot's flying the aircraft. The pilot is still there, watching to make sure the autopilot does what it's doing. So that's the reasoning behind it. If you don't like it, eh, don't use your autopilot. There you go. 
Done. Easy. Alright. So we're going to taxi down the end of the runway here. We're going to turn back and then we're going to take off. Now all the information is calculated as well. So from your takeoff rates, your takeoff pitch angles, as well as your landing rates. Uh, so the VA does have very you know, sort of not too strict, but it does have sort of requirements when it comes to you know, sort of minimum standards for our pilots. Uh, for all that information, please head over onto the forums and it'll give you all the information about uh, what those minimum standards are for landing rates and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get down the end of the runway here, and then I'm going to turn the aircraft around. And we'll get ready to line up, but I'll show you a couple of things in the K-cars before we depart, though. Alright, get our flaps set for takeoff. No one not should be fine. Alright, so we'll line up there. Alright. Break on. Alright, I'm just going to go back to the KCAR software for a second. Alright, so as you can see here, we've got, uh, so it's going through, and this is the kind of messages that it'll come through all the time. So we've got our, you know, parking brake applies, that's where we were before. Simulate unpause, parking brake release, then we started taxiing. Okay, parking brakes are pride now. Alright, so uh, let us uh, take off. Go back to our flight sim. Bring the throttles up. And brakes off. Positive right, and we're good. Alright, we're airborne. So what we're going to do now, so we'll, uh, we're going to turn onto course, and uh, we're going to do that. Now we'll uh, pick up this video in just a moment as we come in for approach for our landing, and we'll uh, see how it uh, reflects the landing rates and things like that. Alright, so we're rejoining now as we're uh, turning in on to final at our uh, destination airport with our passengers safe. Uh, so we'll show you what it uh, looks like as we go in uh, to make sure things uh, all work out for our passengers. Our gear down. So it looks like quite a murky day out here, doesn't it? Now one of the key things to remember for when flying with the VA is the fact that uh, we do look at landing rates. So uh, anything uh, more than f uh, 500 feet per minute um, will uh, not be accepted. So just uh, to keep that in mind when you're making your approaches and your landings. Uh, so if you come down hard and break an aeroplane, yep, you, you broke the aeroplane and uh, we're not going to give you the time for it. So just uh, keep that in mind when you're coming on your approaches and some of your rough weather. Alright, so we're uh, going to come in on our final here today. So keeping that uh, 
watching that VSI, making sure I don't uh, slam it in the ground too hard, hopefully. Oh, mind you, it's a bit rough for this weather. Part of the challenge. There we go, and full beta on that one. All right, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll taxi to the uh, the stand now, and then uh, we'll show you how to file the PyRep to uh, lodge it up to uh, off to uh, VA headquarters, so they can approve it, and uh, you can uh, look, continue logging your hours for your flights. As we uh, taxi over here now. Alright, and just like we did at the start, so you do have to have your parking brake engaged uh, to make sure that uh, you will be able to record your Pi rep. So make sure your parking brake's on. Alright, and what we'll do now is we'll uh, switch over to our VA software. Alright, so as you can see here that we've got uh, gone through, given all the information, so uh, takeoff speeds, takeoff angles, when the gear came, uh, came up to the above ground level, autopilot engaged times and disengaged times as well. Gear down, landing rates, of course, the main thing you need to do as well. Taxi gate, parking brake flight, and we've arrived safely, so there we go. Uh, now, for this one, as I said, if you needed to put any uh, notes or comments in here or any roost information you want to put in for the uh, the PyRep approvers to look at, you can put them into these two boxes here. Otherwise, once you're done, you press Stop Flight, and then if you're happy with it and want to file it, you click on File PyRep. And shortly after that, you will get a confirmation. The pyrep has been filed and you're right to go on to your next journey. Well, I hope this is, goes helped you guys out for uh, your first little introduction to the MSF of Virtual Airlines. Hope you enjoy flying with it. Uh, as always, don't forget you can always find more information on our forums, including a text-based step-by-step guide similar to this. And uh, you'll always be able to find many of the staff more than happy to help just by joining us on our TeamSpeak server here at ts3.msflights.net. Otherwise, you can always find us on the forums as well. Thanks very much for tuning into this uh, little uh, how-to video for msflights.net. My name's been Overwing24. Thank you very much. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.